Good day everyone. Um, this is the group 2 and we will be reporting about the epic poem which entitles The Song of Roland and basically it's it's a poem but it's also a story and yeah um, for the members of the group we have Muhammad Mahathir Muharam, John Vincent Putal, Luis Diaz, Magdar Elias, Amir Nashirin Tajul, Femusrina Baluan, Kriza May Alimia, Dana Mitch Bukoy, and Miss Ayla May Jimenez. So for the introduction, it will be presented by Mr. Muhammad Mahadir Muharam. So good, good evening everyone, especially to you ma'am. I am Muhammad Mahadir Muharam and I will, dis I will discuss the introduction and about the story. So let's first to the introduction. The Song of Roland generally believed to have been composed around 1130. It's the oldest surviving French epic. It is the, pre it is the preeminent example of the Johnson Digeste or Song of the Great Leeds, a poetic form usually used to tell stories of heroism rather than the accounts of love relationship that became more popular, more popular later in the 12th century. The work knew an the work knew an astounding success throughout the Middle Ages. Versions of the tale were popular in England, Italy, Germany, the Netherlands, Scandinavia, and Wallace until 1500. But the story languished during the re Rena But the story languished during the Renaissance, 1500s to 1700s, starting in the late 19th century. Scholars in French and Germany began to study the tale, noting its relevance to the formation of the modern-day France. The epic draws a line in between France and Islamic Spain by describing La Duce France or Sweet France as, cons as consisting of a particular people, faith, and territory. The anonymous author lays the foundation for the emerging French nation-state about the story. The story establishes the 18th century Charlemagne as the father of France. Particular attention is given to naming, spe to naming specific barons who were, in fact, not contemporaries of Char Charlemagne, but 12th century feudal lords, contemporaries of the anonymous author or others of the song. The story glorifies these barons by contrasting their honor Failure and courage against that the treachery of the Muslim, then called Saraceans. The Christian forces of the French defeat the Muslims with divine intervention and great determination. The characters of the story are still revered in French culture today. The treasonous French baron Ganelon, who betrays the noble Roland to the enemy, embodies deception. Roland, Charlemagne's nephew serve as a model of obedience and bravery in the face of overwhelming odds. The Song of Roland serves as the foundation of French literature, giving modern readers giving modern giving modern readers insight into the inception of the cultural life of France. That's all. Hi everyone, I am John Vincent Gipotal and I will talk about the summary of the story. The story begins with a peace negotiation between Charlemagne's representative Ganelon and Marce, the Saracen king of Saragossa. Ganelon, however, is angry that his stepson Roland had suggested Ganelon to undertake the perilous mission to Saragossa. He thus seeks revenge on Roland by arranging a surprise attack by the Saracen's on the rear guard of Charlemagne's army, which is led by Roland. Okay, good day everyone. So I will be discussing about the historical background of the epic poem. So the Song of Roland is loosely based on historical events narrated by Einhard in his um, 9th century Vita Caroli. Charlemagne, the Holy Roman Emperor, invaded Spain in 778 to free the country from the impending Muslim threat. Um, threat. So, for those of us who are not familiar of Einhard, he was actually a Frankish scholar and courtier, which means 
Um, it is an attendant sa royal court and siya yung dedicated servant ni Charlemagne and he was best known for Vita Carole Magni which this book is composed of Charlemagne's biography which is why this was regarded as one of the most precious literary um, bequest or contribution of the early Middle Ages. So the poem um, it, it takes the historical battle of Roncesvalles in 778 as its subject. So, though this encounter no, was actually an insignificant skirmish or battle or clash between Charlemagne's army and Basque forces, the poem transforms Roncesvalles into a battle against Saracens and magnifies it to the heroic stature of the Greek defense of Thermophily against the Persians in the 5th century BC. So, Roncesvalles, bale, um, ito yung small village sa northern, northern Spain. Ito yung, um, itong Basque forces naman, this is an ethnic group of people coming from a region of southwest France and northwest Spain. And yung skirmish, again, it means battle or clash. And when we say thermophily, ito yung mountain and malawak na daan sa northern, northern Greece, which naging lugar siya ng several battles in um, ancient times, wherein yung famous battle na naganap ay between the Persians and the Greeks. So, one of the first known examples no, ng French literature is the Song of Roland, which is the first major work in a series of poems known as Chanson de Jest, which um, translates to Song of Deeds. Ito yung song, itong Song of Deeds ay um, old French epic poems centering around heroic historical figures like Sina Charlemagne, si Guillaume, and Girard. So, the Song of Roland was inspired by historical events and celebrated heroic deeds, particularly yung military accomplishments in the time of Charlemagne. So, the conflict between the Battle of Charlemagne's army and yung Basque forces was exaggerated and transformed in the epic poem into an important battle between the Christian army and the Franks under Charlemagne. So, pag sinasabi nating Franks, no, they are not French, rather they are Germanic people. And kapag sinasabi naman nating Saracens, ito yung mga Muslim forces from Spain. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much um, it for the historical background of this epic poem. Thank you. So, hi, good day everyone. I am Bukoy Dana Mitch A. And I will be discussing... When was the Song of Roland written and the literary devices used in the epic poem? So, when was the Song of Roland written? The Song of Roland was written in the period between 1040 and 1115. During this period, various additions were made to the epic. It was written in Old French and various manuscripts of the epic are available today. The oldest of epic which is housed at Boldian Library, Oxford. The Song of Roland commemorates the Battle of R Roncivax Pass, which was both fought between Roland and Basque. The Song of Roland went on to become one of the most famous epics of medieval times and also had an influence on the Crusades. So here are some of the liter literary devices used in the, in the poem. So hyperbole. Hyperbole, it's exaggerate or it uses to exaggerate the praise to make it more poetic. Just like this, for example, this line, there's no worse belay in all the land of, Sp of Spain. So the second one is the catalog. The catalog list is the list used to convey the impression of size, slope, slope, or importance. So just like, for example, the list of owners, horses, and sorts in page 38. And the last one is the apostrophe. So apostrophe is addressing someone or something that can't respond. So just like for example, so example, um, Roland speaks to his sword. So obviously the sword is not speaking. So that's all then. So I am Luis Gregor Diaz. 
I'm going to tackle about the themes in the Song of Roland, the Christianity and Islam. The Song of Roland reflects the fight between the Christians and the Saracens. The threat of Muslim expansion in the southern goal gave Charmaine the decision to invade Spain and convert all the subjects to Christianity. Betrayal Roland was betrayed by his stepfather Ganelon by deceiving Charmaine and arranging the massacre of the rear guard. He betrays his king, his family, and his religion. Loyalty Roland is a great warrior who is completely loyal to Charmaine, his uncle and lord. Pride It was Roland's pride that caused him not to blow the olifant and go back Charmaine's troop before it was too late. Events Charmaine avenged the death of Roland and ensures that the perpetrators are held accountable. So, I already stated the different themes evident in the story. And these themes are evident if evident in real life in a way that these kinds of events really happen in the real, real world. For instance, betrayal. Ganelon was enraged when he was nominated by his stepson Roland to be the messenger for peace agreement, thinking that he will die in the hands of the bloodthirsty pagan. And it is just Roland's intent, so he tells the Saracens how they put ambush the rear guard of Charmaine's army, which truly led by Roland pick their way back to Spain through the mountain passes and help the Saracens plan their attack. The ambush took place at the Roncesvalles, Rose, which the Christians were heavily overtaken by the Saracens. So, it's so hard to trust everyone around us, even our friends or relatives might talk or do something bad to us when we turn away. I think some people in this class experienced betrayal by people you considered as your friends. For pride, when they were ambushed by the Saracens, Oliver asked Roland to blow on his olipant to call for help from the main body of the Frankish army. But Roland proudly refused to do so, claiming that they need no help, that the rear guard can easily take on pagan hordes. Until almost all his men are dead and Roland knows that it's now too late for Charmaine and his troops to save them. Sometimes too much pride is dangerous. We may not realize that we are endangering the lives of the many because of our selfishness. For revenge, Charmaine and his men reach the battlefield. They find, they find only but dead bodies. The pagans have fled, but the Franks pursue them, chasing them into the river Ebro, where they all drown. In addition, when the Franks discovered Ganelon's betrayal, they keep him in chains until it is time for his trial. Ganelon was given more painful death. Each of his limbs is tied to a wild horse and is literally torn apart. The traitor goes to his damnation. So before we act, we must think about the consequences of our actions and make sure no one is hurt by it because there is always great punishment and remorse after we hurt someone. So that's all next. So, good day to each and everyone. So, I will be discussing the development of the French as reflected in the Song of Roland. So, here are the historical development. So, the Song of Roland, circa 1100 CE, is one of the most important of the num numerous medi medieval French epics and reflects the mythology that grew up around the figure of Charlemagne. So, so what really happened? Charlemagne invaded Spain in 778 with the intention of seizing the city of Saragossa in northern Spain. So on his way there, he had traveled through Basque lands, plundering, looting, and pillaging as he passed. So on Charlemagne's return to France, on the afternoon of August 15, uh, 778, Basques attacked his rear guard and slaughtered it to a man at Roncet's Falls. So somewhere in Pyrenees Mountains between France and Spain, the exact location remains in dispute. So in Hart, 775 to 840, in his life of Charlemagne described the incident briefly in his notes on the Spanish expedi expedition. So according to Hinard, a few nobles were killed including Rodelad, Lord of the Marches of Britain. So, it is unclear what impact the disaster had on Charlemagne's land. So, because it merited few words from in heart, one is tempted to conclude that it was minor and did not really hinder Charlemagne's military campaign. So, but it did delay his establishment of a of a Spanish march by almost a decade. So, and it and it did allow Saragossa to remain an independent emirate in addition. So in addition, the Basques remain an independent force. So as a result of the succeeding battles, also. So next. So here are uh, some points to consider in 
uh, in, the de- in the development of the Song of Roland. So, the poem is the first of great French heroic poems known as chans- Chansons de Geste or known as Songs of Great Deeds from the Middle Ages. So, these chansons also serve as symbols of newly developing French national awareness which was occurring in the high Middle Ages. So, a, par- a process that defined what it meant to be French and that culm- culminated during the Hundred Years War with figure of Joan Arc Bailey. So, so, the song importantly has illustrated some of the char- characteristics of what it meant to be an ideal knight in the service of the King of France. If, even though Charlemagne had never been techni- techni- technically uh, a king of France, so uh, another points to consider is another important point to remember is what we call, call the holy war aspects of the point. So in the song, the battle that Roland fought was not against Pasquez but against Maslin. So the final version of the point dates to the time when the Crusades were just beginning to be launched and thus the final version portrays the duty of ideal knight as serving not only the king of France but also the church in its battle against Maslin. Thus, according to the song, a major part of the definition of what it meant to be French was to be Christian. So, another... So, on the other hand, there is a match in the poem that illustrated that the, that the relationship between Christian and Maslin was not always based on hostility but on a super-religious code of conduct expected of light. So, that brings me, so this brings me to the next point, which is which is the portrait visual ideals. So, for example, a council of lords and his lords by Charlie Main who repeatedly called his lords together for council. So, that was the way that it was supposed to happen in the political arena. So, thus, in some respect, the song was intended to serve as a reminder to kings who were trying to increase their personal power at expense of their visual nobility, that they are just one among equals and should take counsel from their council of lord so next so here are the cult- cultural development so the song of roland communicates the values of wealthy to lord and land that are combined with duty heroism and trustworthiness so the struggle that dominates the core of the poem the battle between king mars mars seal and and roland is not just a battle between christianity and Paganism. So it is. It is also a battle for soul of wealthy and everything that medieval medieval France would have held so dearly. So the song of Roland is a unique poem of medieval word. So the word the word blends Frankish Gothic wealthy and feudalism with the theological virtues of Christianity in remarkable synthesis that provides for action, energy, and emotion. So. All the liars in play, including King Mars, Marsil, who is injured during the battle. The, the liars die because they betrayed the highest value of wealthy, which is trust, 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 worthiness that is constantly manifested in duty to Lord and land. So there can be there, there can be no mistake the intent of heroic song of failure. So that will be all for the historical historical and cultural development. Thank you. So, uh, good day to each other. Uh, my name is Walter J. Elias. So, I'll be covering about social development uh, in aspect to the song of all. So, the point managed to combine the perfect virtue, values of oral religion and built in with the Christian theology of love, truth, and wisdom. The dazzling tale that would represent a part of the literacy rules of medieval Christendom, the mixture of the heroic tradition of friendly sexual tribalism and the theological virtues of Christianity, which eventually ultimately torpedoed Jesus Jerusalem. Will be heard in 16th 
16th century. The 12th century they also put the coin at the birth of the Channel Beaches genre which, which include the trilogy of the heroic poem dealing with the crusade known, known in English as the crusade cycle. The, the argument for the late day rests upon the assumption that the poem reflects the reality of the first crusade, the battle between Christianity and Islam, which is also apparently in the point. The heart of the poem communicates the value of wealthy to the Lord, wealthy to the Lord and land that are combined with duty, tourism, and trustworthiness. In the struggle that dominates the power of the poem between the battle of King Marcel and the Lord and Roland is not just the battle between Christianity and the Venice. It is the battle for the soul of wealthy and everything that 11th and 12th century Frank would have felt so dearly so far that the Christianity is the religion which, which demands purity to the king and country. And it's the religion of love that allow for one's love of king, the king and country to consummate itself. Christianity is the supreme religion for the Frankish people and the martial life. Marshall, Marshall Valley. Uh, that's the Oliver Munch, a panel of the looks to fight right along the ballet green. The pagan tribes approaching there appear. He calls Roland, his companion, to see what sound is this. Come out of Spain, we hear. What? How? The Oberg's bright. What? Helmets, this that gleam. They smile our pranks with the pure beliefs. He knew its genius. The traitor of the team was just out there to become, to become our chief. Answer the Count Roland Oliver sees that man is good father. Paul Davis. Written at the time of the first crusade to the Holy Lands at the end of the 11th century, the song of Roland reflects the fight between Christianity and Islam, or good and evil. The poem glorifies Christianity and its debate over Islam with the intention of encouraging Christians during the crusade. In the song of Roland, Carlem Magnus, eternal loyalty lies towards God, for whom Charlem Magnus is the basal and the other basal for Carmle Magni, his thinking lies around the notion that God can make the decision towards punishing or rewarding someone on the basis of how loyal one is. Good day everyone, my name is Ayla Jimenez and I will be presenting to you the last part of our presentation which is the reading analysis. So for the first question, what lines in the first stanza foreshadow the outcome of the battle? So I believe that the line, the battle is fearful and full of grief, basically foreshadow the outcome of the battle because I believe after war, everyone who survived will live in fear and everyone who died will leave a deep scar on their families and friends, also calls it living in grief. <clears throat> I'm sorry. So for the second question, what causes the quarrel between Roland and Oliver in stanzas 130 and 132. What reasoning does Turpin use to resolve it? So seeing the slaughter of his comrades, um, Roland no longer speaks in woes and bluster. He is deeply dismayed. Near despair, he tells Oliver that he'll sound the Oliphant. He hopes that it is not too late for Charlemagne to come to their aid. Oliver is angered. You didn't deign to, comrade, he says bitterly. When I ask you and were the king here now, we'd be unharmed. It is clear that it's too late to blow the elephant. That by the time the king and his army come, there will be nothing left of the rear guard to save. So Oliver tells Roland that his vainglorious decision not to call for help 
has cost the lives of all the men of the guard. Companion, you're to blame for bravery in no sense is bravado. The prudence is worth more than recklessness. Those French are dead because of your caprice. Turpin steps into the quarrel between the comrades. He advises them that the sounding the horn cannot save them now, but it is still the best to blow it. For then Charlemagne will pursue their adversaries and revenge, I mean avenge their deaths. So for the third question, how does Ganelon try to mislead Charles in stanzas 134? <clears throat> so Roland blows his olifant so hard that his temple burst, badly wounding him. Charlemagne and his men hear him far in the distance. So Charles understands the signal, knows that the rear guard, rear guard is embattled. But Ganelon tries to stall the emperor's troops, tries to convince Charlemagne that he's senile and hearing things. Then, that Roland is just blowing the olifant to show off that, in any case, the rear guard is no, in no in danger and that they should ride into France. So the barons realize that Ganelon is a false traitor, trying to deceive them to stop them from helping Roland. And they arrest Ganelon, telling the comp cooks to stay there and guard him, like any common thug. So the Frankish army ride off in the direction of the sound of the horn blast. So for the fourth question, which is in stanzas 170 and 173, what does Roland struggle to do before he dies? So Roland realizes that his own death is very near. His brain are oozing out of his ears. Climbing a rise, he comes to a place with green grass and four great marble stones, and then faints again. Seeing this, a pagan who had been playing dead comes and tries to steal Roland's swords. So Roland comes out of his faint almost immediately and gives the thief such a good blow to his head with his olifant that he falls down dead. Now he fears for the fate of his excellent sword, Durandal, which he is so fond of. He tries to blade the blade against a rack, for he never wants it to end up in pagan hands. So while he does this, he reminisces about his conquests and triumphs. The sword won't break and Roland knows he must now die. So for the fifth one, in stanza 176, what does Roland pray for? Roland stretches out, face down on the grass beneath a pine, tucking Durandal and his olifant under him and turning his head toward pagan Spain, confessing his sins, beating on his chest, I mean beating on his chest, weeping and praying. He offers God his right hand glove. Saint Gabriel came, came, comes down from heaven to take it, and along with other saints, he takes Roland's souls into paradise. So, why do you think that Roland rejected Oliver's advice to sound the elephant until it was too late? So, Roland's refusal was centered on the question of honor, thereby dooming his army. Being a great warrior, Roland did not blow the elephant because of his pride. He considered that blowing the elephant meant that he would have to surrender, implying he would have lost the battle. So in short, they would rather die than asking for help because if he blew the olifant too early, it means that it would mean that they already have surrendered the battle. So for the seventh question, when Roland is dying, does he express any guilt or remorse for his arrogance? How do you think that the poet wants us to regard Roland in these stanzas? So Roland cares not a bit for his own suffering, but is concerned exclusively with helping Turpin and the souls of his dead comrades. Just before Roland's death, even longer, signaling us even more empathically to slow down and appreciate its fullness. So the great repeated gesture here is Roland's lifting his right hand glove up to the heavens. The offering of right hand glove was a gesture that a vessel makes to his lord express his reverent loyalty. 
So Roland here, by his last gesture, gesture identifies himself as ultimately the vassal of God. So this collapses the feudal system into Christianity and vice versa, making the loyal service of temporal rule, lord an expression and symbol for the service of God. The way in which Christian after often called God the Lord had, in this period, real significance. The Lord was indeed conceived of as being like, you know, transcendently perfect version of you, the Lord. So it is this kind of spiritually that Roland gesture eloquently expresses. So God acknowledges Roland as a vessel and sends down Saint Gabriel to accept the proffered glove. And then we know that Roland is saved. His death acquired uh, the meaning of martyr ground. Roland's understanding of the absolute quality of the battle being fought, his unbending loyalty to God and King, his passion and his folly are shown to transcend Olivier's caution and prudence. So for the eighth one, Roland dies from sounding the horn to call for help, not from a wound suffered in battle. What do you think the poets mean to imply? So Roland at first refuses to call back the main body of Charlemagne's army and insists on having the rear guard alone repel the Saracen attack, only blowing his elephant tusk horn, the Oliphant, when the time for effective reinforcement has passed. So he only blows the horn so that Charlemagne and his men returning can bury the bodies of the Frankish warriors. So his delay results in destruction of the entire rear guard, 20,000 men in all. Roland himself not from a wound inflicted by the enemy but rather from the force of blowing the Oliphant, which causes his temple to burst as I've mentioned earlier. So this is not suicidal act but an act of manifestation of the hero's, hero's strength, which is prodigious to the point of causing him mortal injury. So I guess that would be all for reading analysis. Thank you so much. So thank you everyone. That is all for our report. Thank you for listening.